Hi, Shane Sarson. I'm back with uh, the next Sunday stories, and this is a shoot off a little bit from the last story that was about high school band. And I want to talk about uh, the Midwest Clinic in Chicago and how that came full circle for me 17 and 18 years later. So, again, uh, if you want to go back to the last Sunday and see the story about high school band and school band, feel free to watch that. But as a um, junior, in the uh, high school, I was in the, the jazz band, and the jazz band was selected to play at the Midwest Conference or Midwest Clinic in Chicago. And um, so Joe Sills was directing the jazz band, and, and we uh, had a great trip up to Chicago. Uh, and first off, thanks to all the people in the previous year or so uh, that were part of the program that actually submitted tapes to become available for the next year or whatnot. Uh, and uh, I was in that band too, but uh, there was a big changeover as well, especially in the brass. But uh, anyway, we were selected to, to be in the Midwest Clinic. And I think, and I'm not sure about this, maybe Joe Stills can chime in. I believe like either 80 to 90% of your program had to be brand new published music. And that was the way they got the recordings out for the directors to hear so they could go try to make orders and stuff. Um, so you know, we, we played a couple of tunes that we had played before. Uh, one of my favorites was the Queen Bee from Count Basie. But, uh, and then all the other tunes were newly published uh, music. Uh, anyway, part of our, our thing was we had a saxophonist J.B. Abersol, Jamie Abersol as a guest artist, as well as one of my drumming heroes, Louis Belson. So, uh, and we played a piece called Carnaby Street. So for me, Although it was exciting to work on Carnegie Street, it was very intimidating because it's full of drum solos and I, I, I obviously had no vocabulary of licks and tricks and solos at that time uh, to carry on such large solos. But anyway, um, we go to Chicago and uh, you know, we're preparing for the, the trip and everything. We go to Chicago and I'm just blown away by, you know, watching some of the other bands play, and not jazz bands, but concert bands, and I was just, oh my gosh, these bands are just incredible. Obviously, to go to the Midwest, you have to have a special program of some kind, but uh, also part of that was I was just like a kid in a candy store when it came to the exhibit hall, uh, you know, coming from... Uh, or growing up in Murray being such a small town and having a local music store, I had never been exposed to the amount of equipment uh, right in front of me and everything. So I specifically remember, remember being in the Zildjian booth uh, and I'm sitting there looking at symbols and everything and I look up and Louis Belson is standing right there. So I just, like a, again, I freak out. Oh my God, you know, Louis Belson's right there. Shook, shook his hand, told him I was from the band that was going to play you know, with them tomorrow and everything. I was really excited. And he, he saw my name tag and he said James and everything like that. And he said, oh, great, I'll see you tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. So we were in the actual auditorium or ballroom, I guess you'd say, that we were going to perform in and we were practicing and rehearsing and whatnot. And as the band's playing, Louis Nelson walks in and every, you can see everybody kind of whatever. And Joe Sills cuts the, the uh, the band off and Louis Belson says, Hey James, how you doing today? I was on cloud nine because he had remembered from the previous day and everybody kind of looked at me like, you know him? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, he actually did the rehearsal on my kit and I took a bunch of, of, of just, I, I think I had a pocket instamatic camera and just took a ton of pictures and uh, whatnot. And was just, you know, how often do you get to stand right there watching one of your, heroes play the drums uh, and, and and on even on your own drum set so it was it was great and then of course we performed the concert and he came in and he was actually playing a gig it was late getting to us so from where he was going to be in the program he ended up closing the program which was probably the best because it's hard to uh, follow that but anyway so the performing experience was something amazing and uh, you know having Willie Belson be a part of it and they made a um, a double album, which I, thanks to Todd Hill, I eventually got my hands on again and uh, whatnot. And uh, I think Joe Sills had actually put out some CD recordings of it for people to get who didn't have it. So anyway, um, so 
it was just an experience again that I'll never forget. You know, not everybody went to national championship. Not everybody gets to be in the Midwest Clinic performing either. And, and I was lucky enough or fortunate enough to have both of that. Uh, now fast forward 17 or 18 years later, and I'm playing with a, a rock band called Redstone and I'm on the road, we're in Missoula, Montana. And I go to this uh, music store and it's run by a guy named Checkers. And he just had this huge drum collection and found out that Louis Belson was doing a clinic in town at the college. So we go over to this auditorium at the college or high school and I ran into Louis again, introduced myself, and I mean, God bless him. He pretended he remembered me, but I'm sure he did. And uh, got my picture taken with him again and uh, asked him some questions in the clinic that he, he demonstrated some stuff and whatnot. And then, you know, 10 years after that or so, uh, I, I actually um, was playing in a big band in Boise, Idaho called The Wind Machine. And we would do these, uh, it was called Jazz Under the Stars. It was the summer concerts and we would bring in uh, featured artists and we would support them. And Louis Belson came in. So what, what we did is we did an entire set with myself playing the drums and then an entire set with Louis Belson featured out front. So uh, I was on a riser with my uh, Slingerland Buddy Rich White Marine Pearl kit and Louis had a double bass White Marine Remo kit below me. So I was up high and he was down low. So they were, either way the band was close. And we did a, uh, a featured piece where, uh, I think it was a don't mean a thing, but they got that swing. Uh, and we were gonna do what a lot of people call a drum battle back and forth, but it's just basically just exchanging solos. And uh, it, it was a highlight of my life, I'll never forget it. Um, you know, I was intimidated, you know, again, you don't sit down and get to play with your hero every day and actually trade. Now, obviously my vocabulary had increased quite a bit from those early days. Uh, I had a blast and I do have it on, on a uh, old videotape and it's, I think it's in my iTunes, but the, the computer that my iTunes is on is not hooked up right now. So I don't have access to post the video right now. Maybe, maybe I will at some point, but anyway, I got to play a drum battle with Louis Belson and just was in heaven again. So two of the high points in my life revolve around Louis Belson. Uh, again, one of my drum heroes for sure, and definitely uh, one of the nicest guys, sweetest guys I've ever met. And uh, he, he, he was just a blessing to be around and, and just a good guy. And uh, I have tons and tons of his record, you know, records and CDs and stuff like that. And uh, he, he just was, was super cool. He gave me some sticks and stuff like that. And uh, so I still have that. I still have the Louis Belson tower with his Louis Belson logo on it and stuff like that. Um, so um, the memories I'll treasure forever. Uh, and I, obviously I was lucky enough to, to at least at that point be in an age where somebody actually caught it on video. And so I have the uh, drum battle uh, with, with Louis on video. If I can get it to a point where I can convert it over to a file, maybe I'll try to post it somehow. But uh, it was uh, something I'll never forget. And uh, you know, Louis passed away a few years ago, and I can say that he was definitely a, a, a large inspiration in my life, and I'll never forget him, and never forget Midwest, and again, never forget my drumming hero, Louis Belson. Thanks.